There is one planet in our solar system that stands above the rest in just how difficult it is to study. This is mostly due to how hard it is to observe and reach it. You might be surprised to learn that it is one of the closer planets to us as well, joining us as part of the inner solar system. This means it's not Jupiter or Saturn, or even the far reaches of the dwarf planet Pluto. As it turns out, being close to the sun adds a lot of challenges to the processes we normally use for studying a planet. And what is the closest planet to the sun? That answer is none other than Mercury. What about its proximity to the sun makes it so hard to study? Despite this challenge, what have we been able to learn about it, and how did we achieve that? If these are questions you are now asking as well, you have come to the right place. The Wandering Stars. This is a name that has been prescribed since antiquity to the five planets visible to the naked eye. These are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. While the other four are relatively easy to study from here on Earth, Mercury presents us with some challenges. From our point of view, it always appears too close to the Sun. The ideal time for astronomical observations is at night. But because Mercury sets and rises in the sky nearly together with the sun, we never really get it at night. Instead, it can only be spotted briefly shortly before sunrise and just after sunset. And even with this, it always appears close to the horizon. Now, the planet can be observed during the daytime but there are inherent dangers to this because again of how close it is to the sun. The intense light coming from the sun can damage the optics of what you're using to look at it. And larger telescopes are often not even allowed to directly look at or near Mercury because the light from the sun could damage their optics. So we have established that it is difficult to observe you know, from here on Earth, but that really is not all. It is also hard to reach. We've done this a few times. In the 1970s, NASA did achieve a few flybys of Mercury with Mariner 10, which was actually orbiting the sun at the time. It would not be until 2011 when the first mission to directly orbit Mercury would come about. This was NASA's Messenger spacecraft. This meant it was really lagging behind other planets, such as Mars, which received its first orbiter in 1971, or Venus in 1975. Going a bit further out, Jupiter and Saturn both received orbiter missions before Mercury as well. What exactly is going on here? It turns out, distance from us aside, that being so close to the sun makes things rather difficult, both because of its gravity and because of its heat. You see, for a spacecraft that is orbiting the sun, or coming from any destination really, to enter into an orbit around Mercury over just doing a flyby, means it must constantly break against the gravitational pull of the star. We pretty much have two ways of accomplishing this. It either requires a huge spacecraft that can carry lots of fuel, or you must use the gravity of other planets to slow you down along the journey. To reach Mercury, you would need to perform multiple of these planetary flybys, so the journey takes a long time. According to some estimates, the amount of energy needed to reach Mercury with either of these methods exceeds what is needed to reach Pluto, 
which is at average 5.9 billion kilometers away from us. Mercury is only 196,000. We do have the challenge of temperature to consider as well. The sunlight around Mercury is around 10 times as intense as it is near Earth. On top of that, the surface of the planet itself radiates heat back out into space. So, spacecraft orbiting there sometimes have to endure temperatures of up to 450 degrees Celsius. On the other side of this spectrum, on the night side of Mercury, a spacecraft can end up having to endure down to 180 degrees Celsius. This temperature swing will put the materials of the spacecraft under further stress. But what happens when we do manage to get something in orbit around Mercury? This brings us to the messenger mission, which we mentioned earlier. Launched on April 3rd, 2004, it would take messenger nearly seven years before it would enter into its orbit around Mercury, which was on March 11th, 2011. During this travel time, it underwent a series of gravity assisted maneuvers through the inner solar system. These included one flyby of Earth, two flybys of Venus, and three flybys of Mars. These maneuvers allowed the spacecraft to overcome the problem of massive acceleration that accompanies flying towards the sun. It also allowed scientists to properly calibrate all of the spacecraft's instruments while returning spectacular images from the inner solar system. About a month after arriving, on April 4th, MESSENGER formally started collecting data. The spacecraft was placed into a highly elliptical orbit, with it being the closest at 201 kilometers above the surface, and the furthest away at 9,335 kilometers, and it had an orbital period of about 12 hours. Its primary mission lasted for one year, during which time it took nearly 100,000 images of the surface of Mercury. Some of its initial discoveries include finding high concentrations of magnesium and calcium on Mercury's night side, identifying a significant northward onset of the planet's magnetic field in relation to its center, and revealing evidence of past volcanic activity on the surface. This would not be all for MESSENGER either. In November of 2011, NASA announced that its mission would be extended by another year. In fact, it would go through two extended missions, go on to take over 200,000 images, would find evidence of water ice at Mercury's poles, in areas never hit by the sun, very similar to what we think the moon might have, and globally map in both high resolution monochrome and color the entire surface of the planet. Its mission ended on April 30th of 2015 when it was crashed into the planet's surface after having run out of fuel. Of the many things this mission taught us about Mercury, the one I would like to highlight here is the fact that we can visit and orbit it. And at this point, you might be wondering, what else have we learned from our time studying the closest planet to our sun? Coming in at 58 million kilometers away from the sun, Mercury is about 0.4 astronomical units away. This means it is less than half the distance away from the sun as we are here on Earth. However, despite its proximity, it is not the hottest planet in our solar system. That title goes to Venus due to its dense atmosphere. It is the fastest planet though, at least for orbiting, speeding around the sun once every 88 Earth days. It does this by traveling through space at nearly 47 kilometers per second. 
and it's on a highly eccentric egg-shaped orbit, all not too dissimilar from the type of orbit that Messenger had around Mercury. Taking the planet from as close as 47 million kilometers from the sun to as far as 70 million kilometers from it. While its orbit is fast, its rotation is rather slow, completing one rotation every 59 Earth days. It does not have much in the way of tilt either, only two degrees with respect to the plane of its orbit around the sun. This near upright spin means that Mercury does not experience seasons as many of the other planets do. The harsh conditions of the planet make it not really conducive to any form of life as we know it. It has likely been this way since its beginning around 4.5 billion years ago when gravity brought it together from gas and dust in the area. Like the other terrestrial planets, it has a central core, rocky mantle, and a solid crust. It is the second densest planet after Earth, and its core is metallic and has a radius of around 2,074 kilometers, which is like 85% of the planet itself. There is evidence that it is partly molten or liquid, and then its outer shell, which is similar to ours, is only about 400 kilometers thick, so in terms of the whole planet, not a lot. The surface of Mercury is not all that different from our moon here on Earth. It is scarred by many impact craters, resulting from collisions with meteoroids and comets. There are two very large impact basins. One is called Caloris, and it is around 1,550 kilometers in diameter. The other is called Rock Mononoff, and it is around 360 kilometers in diameter. Both were formed by asteroid impacts on the planet's surface early in our solar system's history. There are large areas of smooth terrain, but that are accompanied by large cliffs. These cliffs can reach up to hundreds of miles long and as tall as a mile high. These formed as the planet's interior cooled and contracted over the billions of years since its formation. In terms of color, most of the surface would appear grayish brown to us if we were standing on it. Like on our moon, there are bright streaks as well. These are called crater rays. And they are formed when an asteroid or comet strikes the surface. The tremendous amount of energy this imparts digs a hole into the ground while also crushing the rocks it goes through along the way. Some of this crushed material is then thrown up and far away from the crater, falling back onto the surface and forming the rays. The reason they look brighter is because the fine particles reflect more light than their larger counterparts do. Like many other planets in our solar system, Mercury has a magnetic field, though it is fairly weak at only 1% of the strength of Earth's. As we mentioned earlier, it is offset relative to the planet's equator. Even with its low strength, it still interacts with the magnetic field and solar wind coming from the sun. This sometimes creates intense magnetic tornadoes that funnel the fast, hot solar wind plasma right into the surface of the planet. When the ions strike it, they knock off neutrally charged atoms and send them on a high track into the sky, like they just fling them up, right? This creates what is known as the exosphere of Mercury, and it has this in place of an atmosphere, basically. It is composed mostly of oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium, and potassium. Even with what we have learned about Mercury so far, our journey with its exploration is not yet over. In 2018, ESA launched its Bepi-Colombo mission, which, like Messenger before it, 
is currently embarking on its seven year journey to Mercury, and it is slated to arrive in late 2025. What this tells me is that there is even more for us to study and learn about the innermost planet in our solar system. And my hope is that you are as excited about it as I am. Would you like to learn more about another of the inner planets in our solar system? Then check out this video about Mars right here. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as it really helps me out a lot. And you know, perhaps even hit that bell icon as well. And of course, let us all step outside tonight and look towards the stars.